Hi, Mike Smith here. For one of my web projects, I need to be able to move an element on a web page around, possibly resize it, and then also possibly move it back to its original position. And I've been experimenting with that. So now I want to show you how that works and what might be necessary to make it work on one of your web pages. Okay, let me show you what I mean by this. So this box at the top here, where I've got my controls, I want to be able to move it around. So the way that I've got this set up, I'm using these checkboxes to turn off and on this functionality. So I can just turn the drag function on and I can move this around. And as you can see, it maintains a space for it in this document. So, but I can move that around. And then I can turn that functionality off. It goes back to its original position. I can also resize. So check that box. A little drag handle appears here on the bottom right of this element and I can change its size uh, and that affects the rest of the text on the page. Then I can turn that function off again, it goes back to its original size. If I want to move and resize it, I can do that as well. So now I can move that around and as you can see again it's maintaining the original place for this element. Um, but you will notice something odd happen if I try to resize it as well as move it around. Okay, so what's happened now is that the document has considered that this element now is no longer meant to be in that spot. Um, it's effectively removed it from the document object model in that spot there. Um, and that's important for when we want to put it back. Okay, and the way that I've got this set up, if I uncheck that box, then, okay, it goes back into its original position and also space is made for that. So that's the functionality that I want, not just on this web page, but on some other web pages as well. Okay, so you might appreciate that um, being able to drag and resize and, and then do both of those things on a web page is not standard behavior, but it is becoming more and more common. For example, you might want to design a shopping cart where you can drag and drop things into a particular area. In my case, as a language teacher, I want to be able to move elements around so that a student can, you know, maybe put their controls up out of the way here or maybe make this, this text here, um, uh, move that to the right hand side and maybe play some video or some audio on the left hand side. So basically what I want to do is give my web page users flexible control over the layout of their screen. That's what I want to do. So how is all this done? Well I'm not going to go into too much detail. Um, I'll just give you an overview and if you need this kind of functionality then you can ask your web designer to, to do it. Um, or you can contact me and I can give you a few more tips. So uh, to make this happen, what you need to do is define areas on that page as resizable and draggable. And these functions here are part of a library um, called jQuery, which is a framework for JavaScript. And this language, JavaScript here, is the language of web pages. That's what makes all this interactability happen. So JavaScript is a language that makes these buttons work, that makes these checkboxes work. And it's a very powerful language for controlling the appearance and behavior of a web page. So, so basically what, what's happened here is um, um, these checkboxes have names. This particular one happens to be option three. And the way that this code works is that if that checkbox is true, tests for true here, then um, it, it first of all, first, first of all, it, it um, changes the appearance of this box visually so we can see something's happened. Um, and then it makes it resizable and draggable. Um, and then it also um, adds an attribute, a CSS attribute of position is relative. And that's important for later on when we want to turn this function off. Okay, 
So if, if the checkbox is true, then it does these things, makes it resizable and draggable. Um, if the checkbox is off, in other words, else, then it removes the, uh, the highlight, a visual highlight, and also um, removes the draggable and resizable using this method, destroy, destroy here. And then it also moves that box from wherever you've moved it and resized it back to its original settings. And that's what these functions here are. Now, um, to re-establish the space that, was, that sometimes disappears when you resize an element and move it out of the way, um, well, to re-establish that space, we need to set a CSS attribute position to be static. Um, and that basically uh, puts it back in that original spot in the document. So, so effectively, this code um, is attached to this checkbox. And if the checkbox is uh, ticked, then it does this bit. And if the checkbox is unticked, then it does this bit here. And that's, that's all there is to it. Um, to make this jQuery library work, at the top of the web page, we need to bring it in. Um, that's jQuery there. And we also need uh, another library as well, jQuery user interface. Um, and then uh, an external style sheet as well. Now, if your web designer is familiar with jQuery, they will this will be familiar to them. Um, the, other, the other JavaScript and CSS here are, are, are my um, uh, my programming efforts to do the rest of this page here. But effectively, for the functionality that we've looked at today, it's jQuery, jQuery UI, um, and uh, jQuery UI CSS. That makes all this happen. Okay, so um, hopefully that gives you a, an insight into what might be possible on your website. You might think of other uses for this kind of functionality. I think it's Pretty exciting to be able to dynamically change the look at, uh, look and layout of a web page, and I'm looking forward to using this for my language teaching. Okay, thanks very much for listening.